You know the deal. You're already mad at me. Because how did I come up with a list that was this rubbish? Somebody kicked me out the window. As ever, though, this isn't meant to be a stereotypical countdown. It's wrestlers who I think have shone so far in 2024, even if it's just more than we thought, is the 10 best wrestlers of the year so far. Number 10, Nia Jax. Because Nia Jax has had to take many shots over the years, and while they are always too cruel, sometimes at the heart of the criticism was a matter of truth. Ever since she has returned to WWE, however, she has raised the bar from round one to the point I now find her one of the most enjoyable parts of either Raw or SmackDown. Nia is also one of the few on the roster who is happy just to be an asshole heel with no redeeming features. This hate led her to the Queen of the Ring too, and while I'm aging this list, I'd have her become the world champion at SummerSlam. Few wrestlers could get away with wearing that crown as well, but not Nia Jax. She just wants to have fun, and I'm a huge fan of it. Number 9, Adam Copeland. It sucks he got injured recently, and while, again, some individuals have said some awful things, let's not forget he climbed the cage at AEW Double or Nothing because he wanted to give something back to the fans. Man has given enough, but that's not how he sees things. It's why everyone backstage at All Elite Wrestling sings his praises as well, because by all accounts, he just wants to help explains why he's had all these awesome matches with old brother Christian, Kyle O'Reilly, Malachi Black, Killswitch, Oakland Rules. He is 50 year olds too, so if he was picking and choosing his spots, we'd all get that, but that's not what he wants. He wants to remind us that he's a proper old timer, and I think that he's done that in 2024 already. Just a shame we won't get to see where he would have been by the end of the year, but still, number eight, Rhea Ripley. This one kind of ties in, because she would have been way higher on this lift if she too hadn't been injured. That happened after WrestleMania 40, and it was the worst timing. This was mainly because as much as a star as she already was, she was about to multiply. The babyface turn was clearly coming because fans just love Rhea. For one, she is unashamedly herself, and that honesty always translates, and her run as champion ruled. I know she didn't have any matches, but who cares? She still had her working boots on when needed, and that clash with Becky Lynn to the show of shows was especially good. Ripley was also a monster when she main evented the Elimination Chamber in her home country of Australia, where she felt like a big deal. So as awful as it was when Rhea is good to come back, she's going to fly even higher. I mean, the Liv Morgan feud, the Dominic turn, how beloved she's going to be. You give it another year, my friends. We ain't seen nothing yet. Number seven, Gunter. Have I put Gunter at seven mostly to get you to go, what? Yes, yes I have. I'm keeping you on your toes. It kind of works though, because not only would the ring general be on anyone's list, but you can put him anywhere. The aura he built up with the Intercontinental title allowed him to have a really special moment with Sami Zayn at WrestleMania 40. And honestly, the man never misses. Even a random match with Xavier Woods on Raw was great. Gunter is a man. Let's not forget that within the story too, he lost the championship and then became the king of the ring. I love that fight with Randy Orton too. And while the finish got a little bit fluffed, so what? That's literally the only criticism I can throw at the guy. But it probably wasn't even his fault. He doesn't even need stipulations to get you on the edge of your seat. He just knows what he's doing. And I can't see that stopping anytime soon. Number six, Brian Danielson. This could very well be the last active year for one Brian Danielson. He's also another Gunther in the sense he could have been at number one, but that's no fun, is it? Also, who even cares when people go? The whole list is about singing people's praises. The truth of the matter, though, is that the American Dragon does it miss. Be it Will Ospreay, Okada, Eddie Kingston, Shibata, Edgy Cero, Lance Archer, or Blue Panther, he is just amazing. He could have a great match with my Nan, which would be terrifying, because my Nan is dead. Tell you though, we'd figure it out. Brian is one of the best to ever do it. He may be number one when it comes to in ring action because he makes me feel all the emotions. That last match he has as a full time performer is going to be so damn special. I don't think I'm ready. Number five, Tony Storm. Wrestling is not always about wrestling. Some people don't want to hear that, but it's true. Now, that doesn't mean Tony Storm can't go because she absolutely can, but the timeless character is all time great stuff. In terms of making yourself stand out and becoming a bigger star at the same time, Storm has smashed this. I honestly don't think she could have done a better job. She's awesome. Hopefully, it will also help Mariah May, who of course will leave her teat eventually. I look forward to seeing Tony on TV. That's also the magic. Am I tuning in to watch this person entertain me? Yes, yes I am, that'll do. So Storm is just a jewel in AEW's crown and should be for a long time to come. I even think you could get to the stage where you don't need her as the champion. She is an attraction all of her own. That madness with the black and white tool is my kind of nonsense. Number four, Sami Zayn. I love Sami Zayn. I think I always will. That's why him defeating Gunther at WrestleMania 40 was just awesome, even though his build to that was a little last minute. 
There were a good few weeks we didn't know which direction WWE was going to head in. They picked the right path, and I will remember Sammy being the guy to defeat the ring general for quite some time. Let's not forget, before all of that, he was tangling with Drew McIntyre. Then he had the stuff with Jimmy Uso. Then after he won the Intercontinental title, my word. It was great. I don't want to say too much as it ties into number three, but basically Zayn used his connection with the crowd to justify somebody else's heel turn, which likely will result in a back and forth over the IC belt. That's just well thought out stuff. Also felt like Sammy earned all of this after the Roman Reigns match all the way back in 2023, and the way that he has been presented all year too. The guy cares, man, and he makes you feel something. That's what it's all about. Number three, Chad Gable. So yeah, let's just say his name now. Darn it, we just did. Admittedly, this is recency bias, but who cares? Ever since Chad has turned heel, he has been so good, and proof that that shorty G stuff was an insult. We know who came up with that, but still, what a poor use of the man. He's also so good in the ring and balancing that out with how much of an asshole he is outside of it, because once again, he's wonderful. As I'm speaking, he's just done that segment on Raw where he berated Maxine Dupree and made her beg on her knees. I was actually appalled, if you can believe it. What a dickhead. I really hope the second part of 2024 is him with the IC title, as it would just be magic. It also justifies the work he's put in here, and in the same way that Sami Zayn has helped him, he can then help Opus too. Stories right there. He just feels like a big deal now, which I do love. And as we are here, and it's my list, I am sneaking in Jey Uso too. I'm gonna run out of space, but I don't care. Jay has been utterly joyful in his role since going out alone. Haters be damned. Yeet, number two, Will Ospreay. He was always going to be number one or number two, and it doesn't matter either way, because Will Ospreay is already a proper old-timer. People get mad when you say that, but you do need a little bit of context. And what Will tries to do, nobody is better. He latched on to this new style of wrestling and totally made it his own, and some of the stuff he could do in the ring makes no sense. 2 plus 2 equals potato. The other thing with 2024 as well is he went and proved that he could do it all in an American promotion. Osprey is also a lot like Rhea Ripley in the sense that he is so unashamedly Osprey that it translates to his promo work because he is like nobody else. Contradiction in terms. His honesty shines through though and he just feels like a guy aware of his talent but who also wants to stay connected to his fans. Quite clear he needs to be the face of AEW already which also sums up his impact. If he's not the champion by December, I will be amazed. He didn't even mention the Claudio Castagnoli fight or how he tangled with Okada one last time before he left New Japan. He is just going to continue to build on this legacy. Number one, Cody Rhodes. Because Cody Rhodes has ticked every single box in 2024. He was part of a mega controversy that made social media really fun for that one weekend. Proved his fans see him on the level of The Rock. And he finished his story. That WrestleMania 40 match rules. I don't think any of it works without the endearing nature of Rhodes, who is also having a bad year. I also loved his Rumble win, the excellent match with AJ Styles in France, the back and forth with Logan Paul was very good too. Cody was also having all the beef with Drew McIntyre, CM Punk, and Damian Priest, which was proper compelling TV. I do want to point out Drew and CM would likely be in this list if they didn't get injured. Their work was so, so good. You cannot leave the American Nightmare out, however, because he just is WWE right now. I would imagine he gets greater heights before the end of 2024 when he will go right into a program with Rocky. I don't think it's an era WWE hit their hot streak soon after Cody returned to the place either. He is the man, as he most definitely was, from this January to smack in the middle of June. Know of any other wrestlers that have probably had a better 2024 so far than the ones I've mentioned? Then you have to make sure you drop me a comment below before you click the video on the screen. That's right, it's one of my ups and downs videos. Also, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon.